Hey, thank you for coming by for this. This is a, a special talk that I'm giving this Tuesday night, the 12th of December. You know, I work out of Myers Funeral Service in Porterville, California, and they have a tree lighting event. What, what people do, this is to remember and celebrate the lives of people you've lost to, to death. And uh, we have an ornament for people. They can sign up, get an ornament, hang it on a tree, and it's in memory of the person they lost. And then uh, we have this ceremony on Tuesday where we, uh, there'll be hundreds of people there. Uh, this is the 29th year they've done this. And um, they come together and we sing some songs and we, uh, someone speaks. I'm speaking this, this year. This is the, the little message that I'm going to give. And someone will read some scripture and pray and have music. And then we have some snacks and then we turn on the lights. And they, the lights are on to celebrate the lives of people that they've lost and remember Christ and all that kind of stuff for the rest of the Christmas season. This is the talk I'm giving. I wanted to just share it with you. It might be helpful to you. And I call it Help with Grief or Learning to Live with Loss. And uh, the picture, I, I, I'm going to try to put a thumbnail on it. I'm not real good at that technology. But if I if the thumbnail pops up, it, it has to do with the message and there's It'll be a picture of my, my dad and my sister. And so I'm going to jump into this and share what with you what I'm going to share with the folks on Tuesday night. And you could let me know in the comments if you found it helpful. I'd appreciate that. How old were you the first time you lost someone you love? Can you remember? I was seven, and I remember. The year was 1956. Now, I had a sister, and she was four. That's cool. But you know what I wanted? I wanted a brother. I, I wanted a brother. Now, my mom was pregnant, and I was hoping for a little brother. And you know what? She had a boy. She had a boy who died in birth. My brother died. He died. It will soon be 68 years. I'm still not over it. But I've learned how to live with it. I've learned how to live with it. That's how loss works. You don't get over it, but you learn how to live with it. That Learn how to live with it. That's critical. Got to hang on to that. I'm going to tell you three quick stories that will establish what I'm going to call three quick tactics to help you learn to live with loss. They might or might not work for you because loss is personal and it's individual. It is never a one-size-fits-all one kind of thing. But maybe one of these will be helpful for you. So I'm going to tell you three stories and um, make three tactics in place, put them out for you. Maybe they'll help, okay? First is Danny. I've known Danny since I was four years old. Hung out with Danny in my teen years. And uh, Danny and I went to dances with all our buddies and stuff on Friday nights, drank beer in the woods. Teenage stuff, some of it's stupid, Okay. February 3rd, 1967. Drank a few beers with a couple of other guys. I haven't drank, by the way, since 1972, but this is, you know, teenage stuff. Drank a few beers on February 3rd. Uh, me and Danny, a couple other guys, and then went to the Friday night dance, and that was the typical routine. Danny had an argument with his girlfriend at the dance. He said he was leaving, and he was going to Phoenix from Flagstaff, Arizona, where we lived, and he would do stuff like that. So, but Danny went towards Sedona and Danny drove off Oak Creek Canyon, the top of the canyon at 106 miles an hour, fell 960 feet, was killed instantly. I was a pallbearer at his funeral and had to testify to coroner's inquest. There were no skid marks where he went off the canyon on a road that he, believe me, he knew it like the back of his hand. We went down there all the time. And I'm convinced that Danny did it on purpose. I'm convinced that he committed suicide, okay? So for the next 27 years, every time I talked about Danny, I broke down in tears or choked him back, you know? And I was in Flagstaff on vacation in 1994, and I took some time to go by myself to his grave. And I drove right up to it, walked right up to it after 27 years, because it's where I'd placed his casket 27 years earlier. I had some prayer at his grave, and it went something like this. Jesus, the pain is like this football. I'm the quarterback. You're the running back, and I'm handing the ball to you to carry because I can't carry it anymore, and I gave the pain 
to Jesus. Haven't cried about Danny since. When the pain ends up back in my hand again, and it does, I just hand it back to Jesus. So tactic number two, number one, excuse me, hand the pain to Jesus. Tactic number two, my dad. Uh, my dad was a gentle man, full of strength when needed, and as a rascal, as a young guy, I was on the receiving end of his strength from time to time. I loved him and respected him. Uh, he died 10 days short of his 70th birthday in 1997. Lived in Tucson, Arizona at the time, and his pastor was a friend of mine, and I was pastoring in Porterville, California at the time. I identified my dad's body an hour before the celebration of life service. Had to do that for uh, cremation to be done. Arizona, you have to sign off on it, a family member. So I was used to death and funerals and that kind of thing. By then, I'd been in ministry, full-time ministry for 23 years by that time. But at my dad's funeral, which was an hour after I identified his body, all I could do was sob. I cried like a baby. His pastor came up to me and asked me if I wanted to speak. Then he looked at me crying and he said, I don't think you'll be talking today. And I just nodded in agreement. But about 30 minutes into the service, the crying stopped. And I haven't cried about my dad's loss since. Here's the key, okay? Sometimes your body and your soul just need to cry. So tactic number two, if you need to cry, cry. No matter how big and tough you think you are, if you need to cry, you cry. Story number three, Jana, my little sister. I was 14 and a half years old when Jana was born. My parents called her Boo-Boo. I figured out at the age of 14 and a half why they called her Boo-Boo. She was not planned, okay? Now, Jana was five when I went in the Army, and... Three and a half years later, when I came out, she was just short of, uh, she was she was eight. And um, every now and then, she she would announce to me, because I'm a lot older than she is, and she would say, you aren't the boss of me, you know? And my response would always be, I have no interest in being your boss. I think I'll just be your brother. I think it was 1974 when she wanted to be baptized, and she wanted me to baptize her, and I did. I believe it was 2001 or two when I did about half of her wedding service and sang a solo. She wanted me to sing a solo at her wedding service, so I sang a solo. My son did as well. Jana was diagnosed with cancer in late 2011. She died January 28, 2012. And her husband caught me a little bit off guard and uh, came to me and said, Tom, Jana would want you to do the service. He was asking me to do my little sister's funeral. Of course, I performed her funeral. And uh, our son sang for the service. And our daughter put together a slideshow for her Aunt Jana. They loved her aunt, their Aunt Jana. While preparing to do my little sister's funeral, this is what I thought. I am going to take what hurts me and I'm going to use it to help others. This is how that works. And this is a tactic, okay? What you give is what you get. What you plant is what you harvest. So tactic number three, figure out a way to use your pain to help others. Believe me, it will come back to you. By the way, what do you think I'm doing right now with this message? It works that way for me too, okay? So don't expect to get over your loss. In fact, you don't want to get over your loss. You know why? You don't want to forget people you love. But if you can, hand the pain to Jesus, cry when you need to, and use your pain to help others. That may go a long way toward learning to live with the loss. Bless your heart. I'll talk to you again soon.